Hola. Bienvenidos a la episodio 10 y 8. Wait, is this the English version? <laughs> Just kidding, guys. We only have one version. <laughs> come France next to me. So, guys, welcome to episode 18. Yes? Okay. Well, that's what I said in Spanish. <laughs> um, roll with the fox. So, guys, today we're going to do double under guard pass defense counters. Okay? Start asking questions. I hope everybody's doing okay and we'll get right to it, guys. So anytime you're dealing with a counter, you have to realize the counters are easier and you have more to your disposal the earlier you address the problem. There's a saying, an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. Okay? So it's especially uh, you know apropos in, in the current environment. So guys, as Enrique starts to do double under. I want to kind of keep my legs very wide and heavy. So if I'm, my body's on the ground, he can connect his hands, and now that's a problem. So as I want to have him lift as much, and it's going to be a lot harder for him to lift the further my hips are away from me. Yeah, 155 pounds today. <laughs> so guys, I want to try to move as far backwards, but what I'm going to try to do is as, as soon as I see this happening, I want to stay heavy and I want to control his wrist. I'm going to swim one of my legs under and I want to punch my foot all the way through to the other hip. Now, this is critical. No gi, I'm going to hold to his wrist. With the gi, you can grab onto the gi, but you want to make sure you pull his arm. Don't just sort of, don't start to straighten out your leg and had his arm drift out. No, I'm pulling. Yeah. Yeah. Nice stretch. We'll look at it from the other side. Uh, usually what happens, guys, if you threaten this, the guy will back right off. So I want to make sure I stay heavy, and I'm going to weave one foot all the way through to the other side. I don't really care about his right wrist too much, but I will hold on and just... it's. It slows down his progression. But the most important thing is for me to pull his left wrist and slowly, guys, stretch up your leg, all right? I'm going to switch to Enrique's uh, right arm because it's a little better stretched out than the, his left arm. Thank you, Fox. So as I'm doing this, I... Yeah. So he will tap. There are guys that are extremely flexible, like Mike, who's sitting behind the camera, and when that, they can kind of cut, go quite far with the pain. I'm gonna let go of his arm because I don't want to break Enrique's arm. But if that happens, I will just ride to the top and finish. I normally would not, if if this was Mike, I would not have let go of that wrist. Enrique, I have to let go, even though his right arm is somewhat stretched out. <laughs> I have to do more stretching <laughs> for you. Um, I, I felt there's just, you know, if, if he felt the wrong way a little faster, we might have a break. So let's not go there, but let's look at it one more time. So he goes no under. I'm already, if I can post on his leg, I will. And I'm pulling. And I'm, now I'm going to slowly stretch, guys, real slow. Now, if he folds over, you could just ride up to the top and take a sweep. You know, whatever whatever presents itself. All right. So it's uh, a, again, if you have somebody super fle flexible, there's a possibility they might. Fl that's the only way for them to escape. They might flop to their side, and you just just take it as a sweep. That's not a bad outcome. When the guy's threatening double under guard pass, next thing you know, you're mounted or you're on top of cross side. So not only did you get a sweep, but also you're in a very dominant position. Do we have any questions on this so far? 
Yes, on Facebook, Tom Dodow says, thanks again, you guys are great. Thank you. And he says, if they counter by dropping back into combat base, how do you address it? Cheers. How is the combat base working for you? Tom. Does that answer your question, Tom? <laughs> I, don't, I don't think Enrique wants me to do this again. It's a lot longer. Yeah. He can survive a little bit longer and allows him to drop in, but just stay on it. Stay on it until you can either finish him or ride up onto the top. One more time on that. <laughs> so, rather than weaving over his leg, I'm weaving up. Sure, sure, sure. All right. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna lighten up on it a little bit so he could. Tough. All right, he can't do anything. So, anyways, there's your answer. All right. Uh, and Eric uh, Island says, "Greetings from Sweden." Hi. Uh, all right, so we move right on. So the next step is so this is when you recognize that pass early when he's usually you know when when the guy drops in and kind of far away from you yeah once he gets a little bit closer I no longer can weave my legs legs in it's just his hips are too close so what we're gonna do guys we're gonna do go to bolt cutter grip like where are we doing it with a guitar this uh, I believe is, is part of uh, Sean Williams guard um, so right now no matter how, I've, I've done this to way bigger guys than Enrique. Uh, and I'd like to pull and let his arms slip out because now I can attack either triangle or reverse triangle. But even if that does not happen, so even if, if yeah, this guy tried to pass. They're, they're not passing your ball. Can you drive your knee across? There, so even though you do not necessarily, you may not necessarily be able to pull that arm out, you know, when you stretch it out, and if, once it comes out, you can attack Uribe you can attack uh, a triangle. The Uribe is going to be very weak because your, your feet are not on the hips. So I would, I would actually, if his arm does come out, go into triangle, straight or reverse, whichever he gives you, okay? Uh, I would stay away from the origami just because you do not have your feet on the hips. If, if you could get your feet on the hips, I would have gone with the first technique we went over, okay? This is like his hips are a little too close. You can't get your feet. You cannot weave your foot. So now you have to go into... Williams guard, you have to go, basically it's the Urigatame bolt cutter grip. You go under his arm, over, so you're going over your leg, but under, your, under his arm. So, um, my left arm is over my left leg, but it's under his right arm, and then I connect. Guys, again, when you could make these connections, try not to have your wrists all collapsed. You wanna make sure that you have a nice, straight wrists and a good bolt cutter grip on this. And even if you're dealing with a very strong individual, they're not gonna be able to pass, all right? So if I can pull his arm out, now I can go into a defensive mode. But if I cannot, this becomes a bit of a stalemate. But your guard is not getting passed, and now we're sort of just battling here until he decides, if he takes out his arm, yeah, you go straight back into the triangle. So this is gonna be very bad, all right? So, um, if that happens, guys, this is your second line of defense, all right? You, ha you cannot, you have to make sure you pick the line of defense depending on how far into the pass he is. 
it's going to be hard for you to take first line of defense, second line of defense, third line of defense, fourth line of defense. You pick one of them, okay? Evaluate the situation quickly. Pick whichever line of defense makes sense, how far he's into, into the guard pass, how close his hips are to you, all right? Now the next one, guys, is a bit of an oddball thing. I've caught some really high-level black belts with this, but once they get caught in it once, they, they, they'll never do it again as soon as they, 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 they back off. So this, <laughs> this might have worked for you once. Uh, and it's not easy to pull off. So I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this, okay? Uh, yeah, let's do it on this side. So this time, when the guy, it just, it's just too late, all right? So I, I'm, still, I'm still trying not to bring my, my feet up, but I'm still trying to push. So make sure you don't get stacked on your neck, okay? So I'm ready to, if I need to, I'm ready to turn, to, to go to. So to bounce off. But as he's passing, I'm gonna bounce a little bit off his upper body. I'm gonna make a switch, which catches him in a very tight arm lock. The more they try to control the hip, your hip, the harder that arm lock is gonna be. All right, it's not necessarily easy to weave that leg in under his arm, all right? So it's uh, my right leg going under his right arm. But if you play with this for, for a while, which I have been, it's quite effective. Um, so as, as he's controlling my hip, I'm releasing and I'm leaving my arm. My leg rather. Let's look at it again from this side and one more time from the other side. And guys, I brace myself against his hips to make sure I don't, he, he doesn't stack me too much. Say hello to my little friend. <laughs> All right, guys. So, even if the guy backs off, anytime you can make the guy back off a guard pass, you've done your job. Because this is actually pretty late, pretty far along into, into the guard pass. Okay? So, if he backs off, even if you're not successful with this, um, and he backs off, so you didn't arm lock him, but... Uh, he's no longer passing your guard. You've done a good job, okay? So then we move on to sort of the fourth one, yes. There's a few questions. Oh, a few questions. <laughs> yeah. Of course there's a few questions. <laughs> Guys, understand that this is not easy. Even some of my good black belts don't quite have it down yet. So for the first one with the key lock with your legs, Christina, yes. Christina Ramos asked. Hi, Christina. Are you pulling the arm while you're straightening your legs? Yes, I am pulling the arm. So I am pulling the wrist, yes. So the more you can pull, the easier you don't have, you know, you don't, you, ha you don't have to straighten out your leg as much. So even if the guy is flexible, the single biggest failure in there is, it works like a charm. If you can weave your leg and you can pull his wrist, it will work well. Even for extremely flexible people, they will flop, you will be on top. But most often you get a finish. When you got hit this guys, slow down. Because once you, you know, you don't want to sort of punch your leg through because it kicks on real hard, real fast. People are usually amazed, oh man, I didn't realize this could work that, that well. Yes, you have to pull the wrist. And on YouTube, Youssef says, hello from France, guys. Thanks again for sharing. You're amazing. Hi, how you doing? And also on YouTube, GM Baseball says, good morning from California. And for the second one, for the Sean Williams guard, are you pulling with the gable grip or are you twisting? Um, it's, it's a little bit of both. So I'm push, pushing and I'm pulling. So this is the movement. It's the same movement like if I was attacking on a common to try to, you know, so when I go here, it's the same movement. 
Yeah. So it is the same same movement like I was trying to to hit him with rigatami. The problem is to have a successful rigatami, I do need my my feet on the hips. That is one of the biggest uh, mistakes people make. They hit the great grip, everything works well, but they don't have the feet on the hips. So at any time, any time I get caught in it, if you if I can move my body forward, I can take it away from him. In this case, I don't have my feet on the hips, but this because he's got double unders, he basically stalls and I stall as well. So it becomes basically a, a, a tie and then just whoever moves. If I can pull his arm out, then I can switch into a triangle or reverse triangle. But if I cannot pull the arm out, we just kind of stall there until you know he decides to do something else. Otherwise he's stuck in my guard and I'm stuck defending. And Legacy Channel says, bowing, Bowing in from Northwoods of uh, Wisconsin. Good morning, friends. How you doing? And the third one, if that arm lock doesn't work, is there a sweep? No, usually what happens, so just shake your arm out, okay? So as I'm going for this, say hello to my little friend. So basically, it's, it's, it's a regard. But understand, guys, I, I don't know if you see, this is the game that I advocate. This is the game that I have for myself. This is the game I want for my students. As soon as I regard, I regain my momentum. I go after him. I don't just close my guard and say, thank God he's back in my guard. I'm going straight. As soon as I regard, I'm going straight into an offensive mode. I don't pause in neutral. I skip neutral. All right, so again, just in general philosophy, if, if I can successfully regard, don't just regard, wrap your legs, close your ankles, and then say, okay, I'm, I'm ha no. As soon as you're regarding, that's your best opportunity to start to create either that perpendicular guard, which is what I just did now, or if I can, I regard into split guard, which now allows us a lot of different attacks, and split guard's been covered by both the roll with the fox, we used to do it on a monthly basis for like nine months on a daily, and on the antivirus edition, which we're doing daily, seven days a week. Um, uh, it, it's, been, it's been covered. So as soon as I regard, I'm going into an offensive guard, which is whether it's perpendicular guard or, or the, the split guard. But that's what you get. If he yanks, if he reads this and yanks his arm out, so as he's doing this, he's, the pressure is off. So he's no longer passing guard heavily, and you can regard. Okay? So let's move on to the sort of the, the, the last, the fourth. And this is when you kind of, uh, when you can kind of uh, realize, okay, none of these counters are going to work. So don't, don't choose, okay, okay, I went with one. One didn't work. I'm going to two. Two didn't work. I'm going to three. Three didn't work. I'm going to four. It's not going to be like that. It's either you choose three, four, two, one, whichever you have the opportunity when you realize what's going on and the best opportunity you have. If I could hit him with at the very beginning with one, that's the one I like to choose. But sometimes he's just too late. He's already way deeper. His, his, his hips are underneath yours. And the number one is no longer going to work. So you have to pick the one. You cannot go in sequence on this one. So the last one is, you know, I'm just completely dominated. So guys, at this point, you don't want to have the guy disengage and pin your head. Now you have nothing. So before this happens, I'm actually going to push, like push into him, and I bounce. And immediately go, and immediately go into turtle, and I fold. So I slowed it down so you guys can see, but basically I'm going into turtle, and then I quickly read, is he coming forward? In which case I fold. If he sort of backs off, I'm going in for a reversal. So this is, I got caught late, okay? So I just bounce, I turtle, and if I can, I'm going straight after him. So if I feel, what do you think he got? Where's your hand? If you're drifting, you got nothing. Yeah. Um, so as soon as I felt that he was backing off a little bit, I'm moving forward. I'm trying to 
reverse him. I'm, I'm going for my own sweet way. But if he's coming forward, I'm going to fold. We worked on this in one of the episodes. Antivirus, the daily edition, we worked on, on, on that sort of turtle fold where you put him into split guard. Okay? So, so this time I just bounce, and then I'm going into split guard. Again, guys, as soon as I regard, if I can, yes, this is going to be nice for me. Okay? So when you get caught late, guys, make sure when you do this, you cannot go straight over your head. You have to look one way or another. The benefit of, the, of the doing this is you choose the side, and therefore you can prepare a little bit better. But you have to turn your head. You cannot, if I try to just bounce a goal, I'm gonna go, oh crap. Enrique can do this, actually. He can do this. For me, I'm like, oh, this is bad. So when I do bounce, I push. So look, what I'm pushing with my legs, my hips come off, then I bounce back. So I push with my legs, and then push my hips forward. So I'm looking. So I'm not looking straight ahead. I'm looking and then immediately folding into whatever I can get. Okay? Do we have any questions on this? So Renee Hernandez. Hi, Renee. And I'll be 63 on Instagram. As to see number three one more time. Yeah, uh, sure. Now, number three where I unlock him, or number three where the, the arm he wakes up? <laughs> What's, what do we got here? All right, so there's number three one more time. And on Instagram, Avi63 says when he goes to turtle, the guy's usually all over him. So what yeah, can he do? Because you have to look at the episode where we went over this. I forget which one it was. <laughs> uh, because what you're doing is you turtle and then you fold. So as, as I'm turtling, so it's the same turtle off a guard pass. So sort of shoves my legs. I'm, so look, I'm changing the angle. So I went with, lined up with Enrique to being perpendicular with him. So I'm changing the angles and then I'm gonna go back to lined up. And two, I'm changing the height of my body. So you know, you look at my body, like I'm on my knees. I'm not flat, I'm not log rolling. I'm, I'm on my knees and I'm arching my back. So if he does drop in on me, as I fold my back, that creates some opportunity for me to fold. So as I'm arching my back, he drops in on me. I decide when my back gets unarched and I fold underneath him. So I'm doing two things. I'm changing the direction, the angle, and also height. So as he's chasing me, he until I stop, he never quite settles down and see you know, he picks the angle for himself. By, as, as I move through, through this, when he does drop in, usually I've chosen the angle that he, that's like, okay, now I can pause because now I can hit him with something. All right, so you cannot, you cannot turtle like this. Yeah, this is, this is gonna, yeah, I didn't change my height, I'm too flat. This is gonna be a complete domination. Let's do, let's do all this, this one. So here. Look at the weight, look at my back. I changed the height. You think you're gonna hit me with a key? <laughs> <laughs> so you have to work on, as you're turtling, changing the angle as you go through the turtle and folding back underneath and making sure you get a good height of your back. So when they do drop in, you kind of artificially hold them up for a split second, and then as you drop in, you're already folding your body underneath them and start to isolate their arms.
and on YouTube, uh, Unku Mohammed Nawi says, Hi, Professor, been watching all 18 episodes. Nice. This is the first time catching this live here in Malaysia as it is 12 hour time difference. Okay, nice. And Byron Lowe on YouTube asks, can you show a defense or counter to the knee cut pass? Depends how far along you catch it. Yeah, sure. Uh, so again, it's the same, same idea. It's how, how far along is he into the pass? So if I can get underneath his leg, that, that's going to derail the pass only temporarily. Now I have to sort of start to move, get my grips. But so right now, Sorry, I'm not going to break. So he's fairly deep into his, his pass. If I can get the underhook, and I'm going to send him forward with my leg, and now I'm going to try to get to my knees. Now, the question is, what is he doing? I'm going to try to get my head higher than his. But as he's going up, it's not going to happen. I just change direction. All right, if he stays where he is, even if his head is higher, I just reach in for the other leg, and now I'm getting a sweep, and I'm, I'm gonna get a guard pass. With an arm lock, maybe. Okay, so um, let's look at it again. Five minutes, time flies. Uh, so when you have a knee cut pass, uh, if I could, you know, of course, I'd like to stop it before it becomes serious. So as I see him getting ready for an eco pass, I'm going to swim. So right now, I'm going to try to weave my legs into Delahita position. And now I'm just going to, so I thwarted his Nika pass before it became serious. But sometimes you're late. So when he, if it's late, what I'm doing is I, I'm trying to get an underhook here, all right? Be careful because if your underhook is not good, you can get caught in it. That's why I'm holding on to Enrique's left wrist so he cannot connect into, into the doors, all right? So I'm looking to get an underhook. But as he's coming through, I want to send him forward. And now I'm going to try to punt for his back. Now. I'd like to get my head higher than his. So right now, if he's posturing, no, 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 stay there. So he's posturing too high. So instead of going in that direction, I'm gonna change to my left. Because I'm feeling his balance, okay? But if I just wind up here and my left, my, my head is inside, I just reach for the far, far side leg, and then I start to move around. Yes. <laughs> All right. So um, if you can't stop them, and this applies to almost every movement in jiu-jitsu. If you can't stop them, make them overshoot. All right. So that's what I do with the knee cut pass. If it gets too deep and I cannot stop the knee cut pass anymore, I will then try to make him overshoot. And then as soon as the overshot happens, I'm taking advantage of his temporary imbalance. On YouTube, Jimmy T says, hi, Fox, 18 out of 18 live. Nice. And on Instagram, Anand Loves Jiu Jitsu says, namaste, coach. If I am going double under on someone and he catches my arm like you did, is there any way I can get the pass or not get stuck in the triangle? There is one senior who's always doing this to me. Um, are you talking about the, the, the Williams guard, the bolt cutter grip, or are you talking about weaving the foot through? Is it the first one or second one? Waiting on their reply. Okay. Uh, usually, um, if... Yeah, that's what I think. So, usually, if... if, if if I get caught in the second one, so if Enrique... The boat cutter. 
Oh, the ball cover. Yeah, yeah. It's the second one. So Enrique, what I'll try to do is, is get my arm back because I don't want to get stalled. And, I, I, and then I try to drive my knee through. So my counter to him would be to try to drive the knee through. But I don't know if you noticed this. When I was doing it to him, I kept moving my leg in a way that prevents the knee cut to be readily available. So ultimately, I don't like to be stalled. I don't like to just kind of, okay, we reached an impasse, and I'm just going to stay with it longer than him, and I'm going to be given more power. Once I reach an impasse, I'd like to disengage. Uh, it's my same thing with, it, with my philosophy in the 50-50. If I get stuck, I want to, if, I, if, if neither one of us is getting ahead, I want to sort of disengage to and, and look at it from a different direction, okay? So if I'm usually the guy on top, if, if you're the guy on the bottom, you have to stay because if you just disengage, you're going to get your bar pass. So it's usually the guy on top has to look for the disengagement. So if Enrique catches me, don't let me get any through. Yeah. So if he catches me, what I'm looking for the, to do is, 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 is disengage. So I'm starting to back away. I'm trying to put my knee in the middle, and I'm looking to just, just kind of, okay, yeah, let's, and now I'm, I'm, I'm going to do something else. But basically, the guy on top needs to disengage. The guy on the bottom should not, because if he disengages, his guards get passed. Okay? Uh, we're out of time. So today, guys, we're going to try to be like the Swiss train and actually finish on time. Make it the regular 30 minute, unless Mike is looking very intently on this, on one of the devices. Like there's a question that we probably should answer. Uh, well, it's on Instagram is Vanya uh, Altamare BJJ says, thanks professor for all the quality details you give in these videos. Good way to study BJJ in quarantine period. Thank you so much. Thank you. And guys, let's wrap it up. So we actually managed to finish in our normal 30, 30 minute time slot. Guys, stay well, stay safe, and take care of others. I'll see you tomorrow, episode 19, 10.30 a.m. Eastern Time.